Hi everyone, welcome back to the Book Brood. Erin and Heidi here. And today we're going to do a tag that we were tagged in all the way back in November. Oops. So, it's taken us a while, but we were tagged by the Drunken Library and the Johnny Depp book tag. And this was originally created by Erica at the Perks of Books. Yep. And we're just going to jump into this. Let's get to it. Okay. Question number one. Glenn from Nightmare on Elm Street. What author's book did you enjoy so much you read their entire work? So for me, I haven't read their entire work, but uh, Neil Stevenson. I've never been disappointed by him, so I'll eventually get around to all of his work, probably. And Arthur C. Clarke, again, haven't read all of him, but we'll definitely probably get around to it, because never been disappointed. Yeah. Um, I read The Book of Phoenix last year by Nettie Okorafor, and I loved it so much that I am attempting to read all of her work. But I've kind of been failing the last couple of months. Yeah. But I'm working on it. All right, number two is The Mad Hatter. Uh, have I gone mad? I'm afraid so. Name a delightfully insane character. And so for me, I actually chose just the Fearful Log from Julian May's The Many Colored Land. They are sort of half of a binary society that they are just kind of rather insane in general. Okay, and then for me, I chose Ari from uh, The King Killer Chronicles, but mostly from The Slow Regard of Silent Things. And she is delightfully crazy. Yes. Question three. Crybaby. What book features a bad boy with a heart of gold? I had trouble with this one, and I ended up using a book I use all the time. And that's Consider Flavus by Ian M. Banks, and the main character, Horza, is sort of... He's a soldier for hire, but he's trying to get out of the game, and mm -hmm. he has some sentimental things he's looking forward to you know, when he's done with this last mission. And yeah, so I went with him again. Awesome. Yeah. I almost went with a character similar, but then I changed my mind. And I went with Diggory from the Torchkeeper trilogy. And apparently I'm like the only one on BookTube who likes this trilogy. But um, yeah, I don't know. He's like this rebel bad boy. It's but. the Torchkeeper once again. The culling, the reaping, and the oh, sowing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about those ones. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. All right. So where were we at? Uh, I think we're on four. Sam, Benny and June. What book helps you through a hard time? And for me, I went with Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a book that <coughs> helped me deal with mortality, the idea of your own mortality, and so it goes. Awesome. I went with Harry Potter, and I'm going to say Harry Potter helped me through childhood. So Perfect. Yeah. Number six. No, number five. Willy Wonka. A book retelling that didn't quite meet your expectations. I've never read a retelling, so I had to pass on this one. The only thing, because I don't read retellings either... But the only thing that was kind of similar to me is I said Baby Doll by Holly Overton because it reminded me so much of Room by Emma Donahue. And I looked up the publication date and Emma Donahue published her novel in 2012 mm -hmm. and Baby Doll came out in 2016. So okay. I'm going to call that a retelling because okay. it was so similar and I thought Room was much better. All right. And now, number six, Edward Scissorhands, Misunderstood, recommend a book you feel does not get the love it deserves. I went with kind of a strange one. This is a very well-known book. This is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. I just feel like this one gets forgotten um, to 1984 a lot. Um, I feel like 1984 is kind of just the go-to of comparing modern day dystopians. with, with uh, the classic dystopians and I think Brave New World. Uh, has kind of gotten forgotten. I went with Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes. This is book two. Uh, this is the sequel to You. And for some reason, everyone has this weird expectation in their head that this one is really bad and to just stay away from it. And I don't know why, because I thought it was just as good and it's got great ratings on Goodreads. But just everyone on booktube seems to 
say they heard it was bad. So, yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Number seven, Ichabod Crane from Sleepy Hollow. What is your favorite classic horror story? And I haven't read many, so I just went with Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I really enjoyed this one. I'm glad I finally read the original uh, to it because none of the movies have really captured the true spirit of that story. Not the Daniel Radcliffe one? That one was good. I liked that I one, liked but, that one too. but still, no, it didn't, didn't capture right. that, like not even close. <laughs> yeah. I haven't read any of the classic monster stories, so I, I skipped this one. Okay. All right, and then at number eight, Gilbert Grape. A book where sadness and beauty play equal parts. Another one I use time and time again, and that's Childhood's End by Arthur C. Clarke. This book just has you so confused at the end on what you should be feeling about, about what happens. About just the culmination of that, of that story. And it, I felt very conflicted at the end of how, how to feel about it, whether to be happy or sad. Um, I went with Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which I am rereading for like the third time. Um, and the more I read it, the more I see that so many of the characters have such tragic backstories and they're dealing with so much that it's so tragic, but it's also, it's also kind of happy because they're finding happiness after the tragedy and horrible things that have happened. And I just love this book and it's just amazing and everyone should read it. All right. Oh, did you just read sure. that one? I might have. <clears throat> okay. Number nine, Victor Von Dort from Corpse Bride. A book you'd like to see made into a stop-motion film. Let's see. Oh, for this one, I went with, uh, I went with The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury, uh, partly because I didn't really care for this that, that much, and it you know could be fine as stop-motion. And honestly, I, I really have begun to hate movie movie versions or movie mm. interpretations of of books they just they always let you down oh yeah. that sucks i went with doll bones by holly black this is a middle grade kind of creepy uh story about a possessed doll and a group of um tweens that have to um, put the doll to rest in a specific grave to, like, make the spirit, um, s you know, stop hanging around the doll. And it was super creepy for, uh, middle grade and for me, but I think it would translate really well into a, yeah, a film. Creepy dolls. Creepy mm -hmm. children. Yeah, it's exactly. just right up your alley. Yeah. Oh, man. No. <laughs> All right, Sweeney Todd, a book with a concept you wouldn't think wor would, would work, but pulled it off. For this, I went with Isaac Asimov's Foundation. I was, I'm pretty impressed with how he was able to continue this idea that this person predicted millennia of, of universal events that, that would happen um, going so forward from just what he, he had calculated, and, and it was done very well. I went with Hot House Flower by Margaret Berwin, which I recently listened to on audio. And this is a weird story about um, magical plants that um, if you have all nine of them, you experience transcendence and you get everything that your heart has desired or whatever. And it sounds really weird and cheesy, but the atmosphere just it actually pulled it off fairly well. Cool. I thought it was well done. But it's not a it's not a like storyline you would think would actually work. Mm -hmm. Kind of like finding the the magic lamp sort of, but nine magic mm -hmm. lamps from yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Eleven. Ed Wood, a book that is terrible, but you enjoyed it anyways. Oh, for this one, I don't have this one because I I took it back, but it was. Uh, those Who Walk in Darkness by John Ridley. This was a book that I was waiting for her to finish up browsing in a bookstore this one time, so I just picked it up and started reading it, and it was so just, like, 
this cliche just rip off of like X Men pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so nice. I just I just couldn't put it down. Well, you know, it was easy to read, so I just mm -hmm. finished it because I could. But it was terrible. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. I went with Twilight by Stephanie Meyer because it was terrible, but I did enjoy it while I was reading it. I feel like I can't go back and read that one now because I put it on a list of books I never read. Oh, so. that's true. <laughs> that's, yeah. I'd be making a liar of myself. I think I'm going to actually pick up a book I said I was never going to read oh, yeah. next month for the Fairy Tales 2017 oh. thing. Which one? Um, uh, Court of Mist and Fury, or oh, whatever, yeah. the Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. retelling. Okay, number 12, Captain Jack Sparrow. The greatest book character ever, or a book featuring your favorite quotes, share a few. I didn't do any quotes, uh, but I'm going to talk about, uh, let's see, hero protagonist from Snow Crash. I mean, his name's hero protagonist, so they, you, you don't get any better than that. Um, Leto Atreides from my favorite book, Dune. Uh, and then Zaphoid Beetlebrox from uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because he think he would he he would think himself to be the greatest character in a book ever. So, you know. I have two pages of quotes. <clears throat> Get Here ready for this because we're talking about Jorg from the Prince of Thorns. Amy has my uh, Prince of Thorns. This is the sequel, King of Thorns, but this is by Mark Lawrence, and this is the best anti-hero. I have ever read because I don't even know if you can call him a hero. Like, he is a villain. He is a really creepy dude. But I love him to death, even though he's murder tactic. I never hear the end of George. No, he's amazing. <laughs> I've got some quotes. I'll share them with right, you now. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> you got responsibilities when you're a leader. You got a responsibility not to kill too many of your men. Or who are you going to lead? Very true. Right? <laughs> I'll tell you now, that silence almost beat me. It's the silence that scares me. It's the blank page on which I can write my own fears. The spirits of the dead have nothing on it. The dead one tried to show me hell, but it was a pale imitation of the horror I can paint on the darkness in a quiet moment. Mm. Mm hmm And the last one is really long, and I'm not going to take the time to go through it. But... All right. Who, did, we didn't figure out who we're going to tag. We did not figure out who we're going to tag. We will link them down below. We'll figure out some people to tag. Yes. Uh, we absolutely. have to figure out who's done it and who hasn't. Right. I think a lot of people have done this one. but This is from know. November, I think. That's right. It's been floating around, so we got to figure it out. So we're sorry that we don't get to mention you in the <laughs> video itself. but yeah. And even Ugh. if we don't tag you, you should totally do this. This was a lot of fun. And definitely check out Erica and uh, who the, the drunken, drunken library. library? Yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. <laughs>